Hey everyone, it's Julie here. I want to share a bit of my life with you, particularly about how things got pretty complicated with my mother-in-law, Shirley. Now, you might hear this story and think I played a part in turning her world upside down, but honestly, Shirley's troubles were of her own making. She had this notion that I was the reason for her misfortunes, but truth be told, if she hadn't been so intent on breaking up my marriage to her son, Bobby, she might have spared herself a lot of heartache. Let's dive into the story, shall we? Shirley had never been a fan of mine, or any woman Bobby dated for that matter. It was clear to me that her relationship with Bobby was more than a bit overbearing. She seemed convinced that any woman getting close to Bobby was just looking to snatch him away. My father-in-law, Jack, on the other hand, was a gem. He was nothing like Shirley and has always treated me like his own daughter, which is why it really hurt when I found out about Shirley's betrayal. Here's the scoop on what Shirley did. When Bobby and I announced we were getting engaged, Shirley launched into this wild claim that I was unfaithful, saying I was involved with my best friend. It was an outrageous accusation without a shred of evidence, purely based on her baseless suspicions. My best friend and I have been close since we were kids. Sure, we have a strong bond, but we've always respected the boundaries set within our respective relationships. In fact, we often go on double dates and trips together, and Bobby has never had an issue with our friendship. But Shirley couldn't accept that. She insisted that a man and a woman can't be close friends without something more going on. She even tried to convince Bobby that I was cheating and that I was only with him for his money, suggesting I'd trap him with a baby. Of course, I denied her absurd accusations, telling her nothing inappropriate was happening between my best friend and me. I tried to explain how hurtful her words were, but she just doubled down, accusing me of lying. Shirley seemed to believe she knew all about women like me through her accusations were far from the truth. Bobby, thankfully, didn't buy into her baseless claims, and we went ahead and got married. But that's the story of how I navigated the challenging dynamics with Shirley and managed to keep my relationship with Bobby strong, despite her attempts to drive a wedge between us. So, after Shirley tried to spread rumors about me being unfaithful, there was a bit of confusion among some family members. However, once Bobby shared the real story with them, they were understandably upset with Shirley and offered their apologies to me. Bobby didn't just let it slide. He confronted Shirley about her actions, backed up by his dad. Despite not showing any remorse, Shirley promised she'd change her ways. I was hopeful that Shirley would turn over a new leaf and stop her baseless accusations, but unfortunately, she didn't. Things took a turn for the worse when I became pregnant with our first child, a boy. Everyone was thrilled about the news, especially Bobby, who was excited to become a father, and Jack, who was looking forward to being a grandfather. Shirley, on the other hand, was far from pleased. She revived her unfounded claims, suggesting that the baby wasn't Bobby's, which upset everyone. Shirley's skepticism reached new heights after our son was born. She claimed he couldn't possibly be Bobby's because he didn't resemble Bobby as a baby. She even questioned the baby's skin tone, arguing it was too light to be Bobby's child since our family generally had a tanner complexion. I explained that I have fair skin and that baby's skin tones can change as they grow. But logic seemed to escape her at that moment. This led to a significant argument, after which Bobby had to ask her to leave the hospital, deeply frustrated by her accusations. Despite being kicked out, Shirley didn't stop. She went around telling people about her doubts concerning the baby's paternity, causing rumors to spread. With the baby being kept away from the public eye until he was two months old, the gossip fueled by Shirley's claims put us under a lot of pressure. Eventually, worn down by the relentless gossip and Shirley's accusations, I agreed to a DNA test, even though Bobby was completely supportive and trusted me without question. He insisted there was no need to prove anything to anyone, especially not Shirley, but I was exhausted from the drama and wanted to put an end to all the speculation. I had nothing to hide and wanted to clear the air, hoping it would finally silence Shirley and the rumors for good. In a surprising turn of events during a family gathering at our house, Jack, Bobby's dad, shared something startling with us. He had been acting unusually, prompting us to pay closer attention, but we never anticipated what he was about to reveal. Jack confessed that. He had doubts about being Bobby's biological father based on recent discussions with his doctor. This revelation left us in shock, especially Bobby, who was understandably upset and confused by the sudden doubt cast on his parentage. Jack suggested keeping this information from Shirley, planning to have both his and Bobby's DNA tested to confirm their biological relationship. He proposed revealing the truth at a family dinner Shirley was organizing. 
where the DNA results of my son were also to be announced. Despite the tension, I agreed to take charge of arranging the tests, as the situation was already stressful enough for Bobby and Jack. The day of the dinner, orchestrated by Shirley to expose me, arrived. She intended to publicly declare the DNA results, hoping to disgrace me. However, in her haste, Shirley grabbed the wrong envelope. Her premature celebration, claiming the test confirmed I was unfaithful and that Bobby wasn't the father of my child, based on a misinterpretation of the results, added to the drama. Shirley's misunderstanding led her to wrongly announce that the test showed no biological connection between Bobby and the baby, mistakenly believing it proved her accusations against me. Shirley's jubilation, thinking she had evidence to remove me from Bobby's life, was palpable. She didn't realize her mistake, convinced she had unveiled a scandal. Jack and Bobby, on the other hand, were visibly distressed, not by the supposed revelation about my infidelity, but by the mix-up and implications of their own pending DNA results. Shirley urged everyone to see this as proof of my alleged deceit, misinterpreting their anger as directed towards me. However, the situation took an unexpected turn when it became clear Shirley had celebrated too soon. Without fully understanding the document she had, Bobby, already at his limit, was incensed not just by the false accusations against me, but by the entire chaotic scenario prompted by Shirley's actions. The entire ordeal was a mess of misunderstandings and premature conclusions leading to an intense family drama that was about to unravel even further. Understanding Bobby was feeling utterly betrayed by the unfounded allegations against me. I stood back, allowing him to voice his frustration. In a heated moment, Bobby confronted his mother, Shirley, exclaiming, Enough, Mom! Julie is staying right where she is. She's my wife, the woman I love and trust more than anything. She's the mother of my child. Shirley, undeterred, insisted the DNA results confirmed infidelity, urging Bobby to examine the evidence for himself. Bobby, however, steadfastly refused, accusing Shirley of misunderstanding the results and criticizing her for insisting on the tests that only fueled unnecessary drama. Shirley tried to console Bobby, suggesting he was too heartbroken to accept the truth of my betrayal. But it was then Jack intervened, his initial shock giving way to outrage. He accused Shirley of hypocrisy, revealing a bombshell of his own. Shirley had once tried to deceive Jack about Bobby's paternity, a secret she had kept hidden for years. Shirley, taken aback by Jack's accusation, defensively denied any comparison to her unfounded claims against me. She insisted she had unveiled the truth, not realizing the mix-up in the DNA test documents she had so hastily presented as evidence. The misunderstanding was clarified when it was revealed that the DNA test Shirley had been waving around wasn't between Bobby and our son, but between Bobby and Jack, showing no biological relation between the two. This disclosure left Shirley stunned, her secret exposed in the most unexpected way. She had gathered the family to discredit me, only for her own decades-old secret to come to light. Shirley frantically re-examined the report, unable to accept the revelation that Bobby was not Jack's biological son. Despite her protests and insistence that there must be a mistake, the truth was clear. Her attempt to scandalize me had inadvertently unveiled her own deception, changing the family dynamics forever. In a dramatic turn of events, what was meant to be my moment of disgrace became Shirley's undoing. The family, especially Jack and Bobby, were left reeling from the revelations, while Shirley grappled with the consequences of her actions— her secret unraveling before the very eyes of those she had sought to deceive. Amidst the confusion and heartache, the situation took an emotional turn. Shirley desperately tried to convince Jack that the DNA report was manipulated by me, falsely accusing me of scheming to fabricate the paternity test results for vengeance. However, Jack revealed that this pursuit of truth was his doing as much as anyone else's. He shared a shocking piece of his personal history— a recent visit to the doctor had uncovered that he had been infertile his whole life, a fact unbeknownst to him due to never having sought medical advice on the matter before. This revelation left no room for doubt. Jack could not be Bobby's biological father. Shirley's panic was palpable when Jack guessed that Gregory, her former lover, might be Bobby's real father. Her reaction was all the confirmation they needed. As accusations and truths unfolded, the emotional toll on Bobby was evident. He was visibly distraught, not only feeling betrayed, but also fearful of losing his familial bonds. The revelation that Bobby might not be Jack's biological son sent shockwaves through everyone present, 
igniting feelings of betrayal and anger towards Shirley, whose past actions had now come to light in the most dramatic and public way possible. Amidst the turmoil, Jack made a heart-rending declaration. Despite the biological truth, he affirmed his unwavering love and commitment to Bobby, stating that regardless of DNA, Bobby would always be his son. Jack's steadfast proclamation provided a silver lining, emphasizing that the bonds of love and upbringing held stronger than those of biology. Jack's readiness to divorce Shirley underscored the depth of his betrayal, yet he remained resolute in his role as a father, choosing to focus on the love and memories built over 27 years, rather than the bitter revelation. This affirmation of unwavering paternal love offered Bobby a beacon of hope and stability, reassuring him that despite the upheaval, the familial bonds that mattered most to him remained intact. In that moment of raw emotion, as Jack affirmed his unwavering support, Bobby couldn't contain his feelings any longer and broke down in tears. I was there, trying my best to console him, while Jack and everyone else confronted Shirley about her actions. Shirley attempted to appeal to Jack, suggesting they could pretend the DNA test never happened and return to how things were. But Jack was resolute. There was no turning back. The betrayal had irrevocably damaged their relationship, and he declared his intention to divorce Shirley, a decision she couldn't fathom after 32 years of marriage. The air was thick with tension, as Shirley faced not just Jack's rejection, but also the disdain of those around her, including her own family members who supported Jack's decision. In a desperate bid for sympathy, Shirley turned to Bobby, pleading with him to intervene on her behalf. But Bobby, feeling a profound sense of betrayal, rebuffed her, expressing his disdain for the secrets she had kept and the unnecessary turmoil she had caused. Shirley's plea turned to me next, hoping to find an ally in her gender. She begged me to understand her position and to persuade Jack and Bobby to reconsider. But how could she expect solidarity from me after everything she had done? She had tried to undermine my marriage and accused me and my son of falsehoods, all while hiding her own deceitful past. Her audacity left me incredulous. I had no sympathy for her. Her actions had revealed her true character, and she deserved to face the consequences alone. I made it clear to Shirley that she was no longer considered family to me. She had not only wronged me, but also betrayed the trust of the people closest to her. My family, my real family, consisted of my son, Bobby, and Jack, people who stood by each other through thick and thin. Shirley's fate was a result of her own making, and I had no intention of intervening on her behalf. My loyalty was with those who had shown me love and respect, not with someone who had sown discord and mistrust. In a twist of poetic justice, Bobby pointed out the irony of Shirley's situation. She had aimed to fracture a family by questioning the bond between a father and his son, only to find her own family crumbling under the weight of her actions. Bobby's response to Shirley was uncharacteristically icy, a stark contrast to the warm and loving person we all knew. His calm yet frosty demeanor left no doubt about the seriousness of his words, signaling a definitive end to any relationship with Shirley. She was left visibly shaken, unable to meet anyone's gaze as the family expressed their disdain for her actions. Jack declared that Shirley would need to leave the home he had inherited, underscoring the legal advantage he had due to the state's at-fault divorce laws. This meant he could potentially file a case against Shirley for paternity fraud, further complicating her situation by jeopardizing any claim to alimony. Jack's determination to remove Shirley from his life was evident. He sought legal counsel for divorce and initiated eviction proceedings without hesitation. Shirley's attempts to reach out to Bobby and me were met with firm rejection. Despite her pleas and attempts to justify her actions, we chose to distance ourselves, blocking her after reading only a few of her messages. Her desperation led her to our doorstep, seeking refuge and financial assistance, but our stance remained unchanged. Bobby's refusal to acknowledge Shirley as his mother was a clear indicator of the deep rift her deceit had caused. This whole ordeal, while vindicating in some respects, was also a source of profound sadness. Watching Bobby struggle with the revelations and the upheaval in his family was heart-wrenching. It was difficult to see someone so close to me grapple with feelings of betrayal and loss. While Jack found his own way to process the situation, Bobby's pain was palpable, a reminder of the deep emotional toll such family dramas can exact. During those challenging times, I found myself stretched thin, trying to offer solace to Bobby while caring for our newborn. Shirley's audacity to brush off her actions as inconsequential infuriated me further. I made it clear to her that she had forfeited any familial rights 
and was now nothing more than a stranger to us. Despite her pleas, invoking her role as a grandmother, I firmly rejected any claim she had to our child, especially after she had shown no love or desire for him before. Shirley's attempts to manipulate our emotions were futile. We stood firm, ready to involve the law if she persisted. Watching her leave, unable to sway us, was a grim satisfaction. It underscored the consequences of her actions. After being ousted, Shirley kept her distance, surfacing only to try and appeal to our sympathies once more as she was forced to leave Jack's house. Unmoved, we threatened to call the police once again, reinforcing our boundaries. Shirley found temporary refuge with a friend who offered her a job at a warehouse. The divorce proceedings were tumultuous, with Shirley fighting vainly to tilt, the scales in her favor. However, the state's at-fault divorce laws left little room for her to maneuver, and the divorce was finalized within eight months. Despite her efforts to reclaim her previous life, Shirley found herself isolated, her ties to the family severed. No longer welcomed at family events, she led a solitary existence, a stark contrast to her former life. Meanwhile, Bobby and Jack sought healing through therapy, their bond resilient in the face of adversity. Our family dynamics gradually stabilized, with Jack playing an active role in his grandson's life. Regular family dinners resumed, a testament to our collective recovery and strength. In contrast, Shirley's choices led her to a lonely, unfulfilling life, distanced from the family she once held dear.